Okay, Francesca, if you want to start. Yeah, all right. Uh, thank you very much. As Diogo said, my talk is about Monte Carlo methods for freedom integral equation and it's joint work with my supervisors, uh, Arnaud Dussain, Adam Janssen. And as usual, the first slide is why do we care about integral equations in the first place? So uh, this is the object we are going to look at. And in this case, the unknown is the function f. While we know h and g, and you can think of you can think of um, integral equations of this form as the um, what you get by taking a linear system and sending the dimension to infinity. So in practice, if you think about ax equal b, now the unknown vector is not x but is a function, and then the matrix A becomes the integral with respect to g, and the known vector B is a function as well. And so they are a very general model which find application in a lot of fields. I listed some of them in there. Uh, so there is image processing. They've been used quite a lot in epidemiology, especially recently. Uh, they arise as a counterpart to PDEs and in statistics, uh, they're used in regression settings uh, when we have confounders and they are very, very popular in density deconvolution. So they do appear in all the fields, but they are also uh, an inverse yield pulse problem in the sense that uh, the solution F might not be unique. And even if it is, it is very unstable to small changes in age. So there, there really is a need to find good methodology uh, to solve this type of integral equations. So my second slide is again about motivation and is why Monte Carlo. Uh, the standard techniques usually make strong assumptions on the solution F. Uh, for instance, some kind of piecewise constant solution or piecewise linear, um, a linear combination of basis function, and in one way or another, they all require discretization of the domain. And because they require discretization of the domain of F, they also require the same uh, for H. And this is a bit of a challenge because if in one dimension it works quite well, uh, in higher dimension, it gets fairly hard uh, to code, and of course, the convergence will be much slower. On the other hand, Monte Carlo methods, uh, the, which is what uh, we're going to try to use to solve this problem, make weaker assumptions. Uh, the first one is that all the objects we look at, F, H, and G, are probability densities. Um, this might seem even more restrictive than piecewise constant, but actually, Almost all the applications people care about have F, H, and G positive functions. And then we can just renormalize and we obtain densities. Uh, because we use densities and Monte Carlo methods, we can easily deal with the case in which we don't actually know H, but we have observations. And then with respect to the dimension, uh, it is well known that the Monte Carlo algorithms scale uh, with a, um, a rate of one over square root of n, where n is the number of samples that we have. And so they tend to work better as the dimension increases. So just a little bit of background, which is uh, everything starts from regularization. Because the solution is not unique, we cannot hope to just solve the integral equation directly. Uh, we usually try to minimize some kind of distance between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on the kullback leibler divergence, which is a divergence between probability measures and is defined in this way. Uh, this is not extremely important, but the reason why we look at this divergence is because uh, it has nice links with maximum likelihood estimators. In fact, the function f minimizing the KL divergence is the maximum likelihood estimator for the solution f. But, um, if you look at this problem, these are all functions, probability densities, they are usually continuous. Direct minimization is not really something that we can do, uh, but because we have this link with um, maximum likelihood, we have an algorithm, an iterative scheme, which can minimize the K divergence, uh, which is the fairly famous expectation maximization algorithm which is an iterative procedure in which we start from F1 of X, which is just a guess for the solution, might be even be a very bad one, 
And then we use these iterative scheme to get better and better reconstructions. So eventually we will reach a fixed point and we can stop iterating and then we have a minimizer of the KL divergence. Um, well, there are still some issues with this. In particular, the fixed point is not unique in general, which in this particular case with infinite dimensional objects uh, means that the reconstructions that we get are very, very spiky. So they tend to be pretty bad. And if we're trying to approximate a function which is continuous, they are just not suitable. A very easy fix uh, was proposed in 1990 by Silverman and co-authors, which is just add a smoothing step. So we take the same iteration that we had before, but now every time we apply this uh, integral with respect to k, which is just a smoothing uh, operator. And because it's built to enforce smoothness, we will obtain smooth reconstructions uh, at the cost of not really minimizing the KL divergence anymore. Because this iterative scheme uh, does not converge to a minimizer. Um, we showed, however, that there is a fixed point, and in some cases, this fixed point is unique. So there are some advantages over looking at this uh, scheme above. So as you can probably guess by looking at this, uh, we, we can almost never implement this analytically. We need, again, some kind of numerical approximation. And so what are the issues with the numerical approximations? Well, uh, in the literature, people usually just discretize uh, using very naive approaches like uh, dividing the domain into bins, smaller intervals, and then assume that f is piecewise constant. And that requires an analytic knowledge of age. So if we only have samples, uh, we could, in principle, use a histogram to approximate age. But that is not fully satisfactory in many ways. And then, as I said earlier, um, if we work in three or four dimensions, even just in two dimensions, it gets pretty hard to implement this and to obtain convergence in a reasonable number of iterations. So the next bit of background is the Monte Carlo algorithm that I'm going to look at, which is uh, called is a family of algorithms called sequential Monte Carlo. And here is a picture describing it. So imagine that we want to target the density in black. And because it is a Monte Carlo method, we will use uh, particles or samples, which are the blue dots. Uh, we start by just putting these samples on the support of the target uh, at random. And then we assign them a weight, depending on how close they are to the target uh, distribution. We resample to get rid of the particles with very low weights, and then we repeat. So we move these particles around a little bit, and then we will weight them again and resample again and over, and we re repeat this over and over. So this is just a picture explaining what SMC does, but actually more formally, uh, SMC is a full class of Monte Carlo methods, which are built to approximate a sequence of probability distribution or densities that increase in dimension at each iteration. And the way this sequence evolves is a Feynman cast measure flow, which is a very fancy name to say that to move from one probability measure to the following one, we wait according to this function g, and we propose a new state according to this uh, M, which is nothing more than a Markov kernel. So what we did in this project is to combine SMC and EMS. So the idea is that instead of using a deterministic discretization, uh, we use a population of weighted samples in such a way that we can provide a stochastic discretization to the EMS, which is also adaptive. And because it is a Monte Carlo method, uh, we don't have to worry about approximating age. We can directly use samples. So in practice, uh, this is quite complicated to make the link between SMC and EMS. But once you look at it long enough and with some very easy tweaks, um, you can obtain that you can write the EMS recursion in the SMC, Feynman Katz uh, measure form, just by taking the Markov kernel to be this smoothing times h, 
And the only thing that we need to be able to do from this is to obtain samples. So age, uh, we don't need an analytic form, we just need to be able to sample from it. And the weight functions are given by this ratio over here, in which G, uh, we need to be able to evaluate G point-wise. And then we pick our favorite resampling mechanism. And I'm not gonna uh, say much more about resampling in general. So by this, using these identities and implementing an SMC algorithm, uh, we can obtain an approximation of the EMS regression. Actually, uh, this is not a standard SMC algorithm uh, because normally the weights are given functions, so we can compute the weights exactly. In this particular case, uh, the denominator of the weight depends on F, which we don't actually know. So we will need to approximate the weight as well. And for this reason, the standard results uh, in terms of convergence do not apply. So as part of this project, we also looked at the convergence properties of these algorithms. But forgetting for a bit about convergence, uh, if we implement an SMC algorithm with this setting uh, of Markov kernels and weight function, then we can obtain an approximation. And in practice, luckily it works. And I'm going to show you an example from uh, image processing. So this is an example which comes from medical imaging. And our aim is to reconstruct something that looks like this uh, figure on the left hand side, which is a reference image for uh, a brain. So we can kind of see the skull in white and the two uh, areas of the brain. And what we get from the tomography scanner is a number of projections around the skull. So if you look at this on the right hand side, this is the data that we obtain. They are periodic because they correspond to the uh, several angles around the skull. And using this as our data, we can try to recover something which looks like this picture. And in this case, uh, G, <coughs> sorry, uh, G describes the alignment between the two. So it's basically describing the physics be behind the uh, scanner. And so if we implement uh, SMC EMS, this is what we obtain. We usually start from a uniform distribution at iteration one, which is over here. Uh, the reason for doing that is that uh, with the resampling scheme, it is very easy to get rid of particles which are in the wrong place. So we can see that in just five iterations, we got rid of all the particles in the corners because they didn't contribute to the final shape of the image. And then after iteration five, there are some improvements. So we get from something which is quite blurry to something which gets more and more refined. And eventually, uh, from iteration 50 to 100, uh, the image doesn't really change that much. Uh, and if we look at some information about the image itself, uh, we can check that actually convergence occurred. And so we've reached a fixed point. And so what we have in here from iteration 50 to 100 are basically uh, our reconstructions of the reference image. As I was saying earlier, uh, we also looked at some theoretical guarantees. The assumptions that we make are somehow restrictive, but they tend to apply in the integral equation setting. So F as compact support in our assumptions, and this is true in most cases. In fact, in image processing, the image is always defined over on a square. So that is not a, a big issue in a way. Then we will take G to be continuous bounded above and below. Uh, the reason why G has to be continuous is because if it is not, uh, the integral equation is degenerate. So we will need a whole different method to deal with the particular integral equation. And then the smoothing kernel is just assumed to have a bounded density. And this is true for almost every smoothing kernel I can think of. So I wouldn't say this is very uh, strong as an assumption. <coughs> and under these assumptions, we can actually show some convergence results. Uh, first, we looked at convergence of expectations because that's the standard 
uh, object people in SMC look at. So we take some test functions phi and we check if the integral with respect to our approximation uh, converges to the true integral. And uh, by looking at these integrals, we showed that they actually converge in LP at rate one over square root of n, which is the standard Monte Carlo rate, and they also converge almost surely. As a consequence of these two results, uh, we also obtain a convergence in the weak topology, which is probably a bit more interesting uh, because this convergence in the weak topology shows that if we could have an infinite number of particles, then the SMC EMS iteration corresponds to the EMS iteration. So we are actually um, doing this, the, the same iteration that we could do analytically. Okay, so I think I'm almost running out of time. So just to wrap up, what we did in this project is to propose a new method to solve freedom integral equations of the first kind, which is based on a Monte Carlo discretization of the EMS recursion. Um, the reason why we looked at this is because we can make less strong assumptions than those usually found in the literature while preserving the convergence rate of SNC. So it can work in higher dimension than the EMS recursion. And then we looked a bit at the theoretical properties showing, basically showing that the estimator that we have is uh, converging in the limit almost early. And yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. And if you want to know more, I'm very happy to take questions. And there is also an archive uh, print rate online. OK, thank you very much, Francesca. Let's maybe get a round of applause on camera before we stop the recording. So thank you very much. Okay, I will uh, stop the recording now.